Let's get ready to rumble. The Outsiders now on Broadway and unlike anything you've seen before. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. In The Outsiders, the tension between the greasers and the socias culminates in an explosive onstage rumble. We headed into the rehearsal room to find out how the creative team pulled off this theatrical wonder. The Outsiders, love this story. The number one thing that I knew going into The Outsiders that there would be a rumble. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a rumble. Yeah. These kids fight. And I really wanted to dig into it with you about how you went about creating this moment. Obviously, we, we have seen rumbles on yes. Broadway. There's a very famous rumble in West Side Story. This rumble, very different. So talk a little bit about how you approached the challenge of that. Yes, so the script of our musical has amazing stage directions because Adam Rapp wrote them. And the stage direction of the rumble is one of the most visceral, clear, powerful stage directions I've read. And it's violence and it's tenderness and all of these things, and also the elemental nature. In his stage direction, it says it's raining, they get muddy. When I came onto the project, I was like, who, who's the right people to work on with this? And during the pandemic, um, I had met Rick and Jeff Cooperman, and I'd seen their work, and I remember when I saw their work before, I felt that it was sensual, and not just in like a, a sexual kind of way, but it mean that it evoked all the senses. And I wanted whoever did the violence to also do all the choreography so that the physical language could be one language. So you don't feel like, oh, they're dancing, now they're fighting. It's all the way the kids move through the piece. One and two, three, up, four. What's it like building the rumble? Fight choreography for me, it's, it's kind of like, if it's not just right, kind of takes you out. And if it's too good, for me, I'm like, how do they do that? And it takes me out even in that way. So when we were thinking about the rumble, we were like, how do we not focus on, you know, trying to trick the audience into making sure that it looks real, but focusing on the impact of the rumble. I mean, the way that Adam scripted the stage directions yeah. for this piece is he writes that the fists of the boys, they detonate into one another's flesh. And so when Jeff and I were first in the studio with Danya as well, trying to figure out, you know, what is the vocabulary of this? We, realize that that sound could be a really important way in and that we'd have to kind of create a, a score for the rumble of sorts. The soundscape of the, the most chaotic part of the rumble is just rain. And so uh, with some clever sort of th thunderclaps and other stop gaps that we call them, we've found a way to keep everyone in sync. This rumble, it's raw, it's, it's dirty, it's chaotic. It's not quite dance, uh, but it does move from a, a more naturalistic mode and then uh, hopefully, uh, even without you quite noticing, as it ramps into a more expressionistic mode. Because of the individuality and the sort of three-dimensionality of all of the performers on that stage, what we've tried to do in phase one, what we call phase one of the rumble, is to craft very specific um, narratives between all of these characters. It, it, we almost describe it as kind of a Bosch-like painting, that if you, you know, zoom out and see the totality of the chaos happening in phase one, that that is one experience, but you can also kind of zoom in and pay attention to any duet or trio and see a fully fleshed out, you know, crafted fight. So that's, that's the first part of the rumble, and then it, as Jeff said, it develops into something more expressionistic and more stylistic and uh, a little bit more heightened. What is it like actually building it in the rehearsal room and achieving all of this sensual energy you talk about? The Rumble began, you know, two years ago in our first lab. We knew that's something we wanted to start doing our research on. So one of the central um, pieces of the rumble was cracked then. And so we've been building on it ever since. We were able to do tests at a studio with rain and our dirt floor and the bodies to see how does it change when everybody gets wet. Something else that we think about a lot in the rumble is choreographing moments where the performers can check in with each other that the audience would never see or that looks like violence where they can just look at each other and say, are you okay, are you good? Okay, cool, or moments to breathe inside of it. And I think that keeps it really 
connected and therefore the experience for the audience is really connected. And I think because we've spent so much time researching it, it feels like one of the things we know how to execute the best in the show. But it's fun, it's cool, and then it is harrowing to watch even in a rehearsal studio with full lights. It's very impactful. One, two, look, three, four, five, land, six, punch, seven, and hold that. Just hold that at the apex. What is it like actually teaching it and, and teaching them how to interact with each other and what, what is that whole process like? You know, a big part of the culture of the Outsiders company is that warm-up is a really sacred time. So the company meets every morning and it's really an extended warm-up. One part of our brain is saying, oh, this is a useful time where we could be staging and getting moving on with the show, but it, it really pays off because as the performers are all in sync doing a, a breathing kata or practicing their jab crosses and their roundhouse kicks, like that starts to pay dividends over the long run because they're building a really strong technique. Have the two of you actually been up there in the mud, muddy, wet, with the, thrown around with the guys? That, 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 that's, that's actually happened? 100%. You know, we're still uh, at a point in our careers where we can do everything we're asking the actors to do. And yeah. it's, in fact, it's a big part of what gets everyone's buy-in is that we're not asking you to do something that's, that's that's dangerous that we wouldn't do ourselves. We're not sitting there in a chair and saying, "Hey, can you try that? Can you try that?" No, we're we're uh, our faces are in the cork. We got mud all over us. We're we're <laughs> we're wet with you, um, and it's it's a team effort for sure. Five, six, and seven up eight. For the characters on stage, it is a life or death moment. Yeah. What do you want audiences to feel? I'm sure it will bring up different things for different people, but it does create emotions. The whole show does, and especially this. The, the rumble is real, but the whole piece is being told from Pony Boy's perspective. It's a memory play. He's remembering it. So there's aspects of the rumble that go into like quite like a nightmarish place. Um, what you see in the rehearsal room is the building blocks, but when you come to the theater, there is fire, real fire. There's smoke, there's rain, there's mud. Bodies really doing this incredible virtuosic physical act in front of you. So there actually is not anything else like it. And I do think it needs to be witnessed and you'll be close to it. It won't be like seeing something on a screen. It will be deeply felt. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. I think what's unique about the rumble is that it has to be experienced in its totality. The way it's designed is that it moves from strict naturalism through to this very expressive theatrical vocabulary. And that, that ramp itself is what we feel makes the rumble special. You need to sit there in the audience. You need to feel the sound of the rumble resonate in your chest. You need to see uh, the, the sweat and the rain fly off the bodies. There's no substitute to being in that theater and having that experience. Mm -hmm.